Hello again, everyone. Welcome to 90s to Now. I, of course, as always, am Jerry Strauss. And folks, we have a an impressively awesome show for you this time, an impressively awesome guest as well, um, embodying everything that is this show, 90s to Now, because from the 90s to now, she has literally been a linchpin of one of the most iconic TV families of all time, also one of the most iconic casts in all of TV history. You can see her each and every week as Becky Connor on ABC's The Connors. She is Lisey Gardson. Hi, Lisey. Hi, how are you? Hello, I'm great. I'm great. I'm so excited to talk to you. You seem exceedingly calm for someone who is here on this end of the roller coaster ride that is the fifth season of The Connors. Yes. Um, we're approaching the end of the uh, the end of the season. So before we even get started, I mean, I, I want to ask you, because those who have been following the show for the five years that we've been able to enjoy it, it's been like a roller coaster ride unto itself, right? There's been creative changes. There's been pandemics. There's been lockdowns. How has this season been for you? Has your blood pressure been able to come down just a little bit? <laughs> Um, well, yeah, I think compared to what we've been through, you know, five years ago, everything has kind of been smooth sailing after that. But um, yeah, the pandemic. Um, but I have to say that, you know, I, ha I know a lot of people that haven't been able to go to work in person for a long time, or now it's kind of a weird thing. They sometimes go in and maybe twice a week. So mm -hmm. I feel really lucky to go in and actually see and talk to other people, um, you know, the old fashioned way. I, I feel like, you know, that's part of my job, obviously, but I get a lot of out of it. And um, I just love the people I work with. So it's a definite pleasure. And you guys were one of the first casts, in my recollection, one of the first productions to really make that push to go back to work, even though you had to jump through a lot of hoops to do it, no studio audience. And I mean, were you proud of the fact that you guys really were proactive in finding ways to keep everybody safe, but to get back to doing what you do? Well, most people know that the Connors are survivalists, so... Um, it's not too <laughs> unusual that we were the first to kind of go forth and conquer in our, you know, whatever. And, and it was cool because a lot of other shows then asked us how we were doing it. And so we could kind of advise them and also say, look, we're, you know, you know, isolating, we're not going out. I mean, it's a huge difference because as a cast member, you know, of course, we're the only people that actually show our faces. So all the crew is masked. So it was a tremendous amount of pressure for us as cast members to kind of behave and, you know, isolate and not have any fun and, <laughs> <laughs> and et cetera. But um, yeah, it's kind of a wild thing. I mean, it's still going on, but it's kind of wild thing to look back on and think, wow, we got through that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and the show has been amazing all through that as well, continues to be. Uh, we put out the word before we were going to record this today that this was happening. And hey, guys, if you're a fan of the show, do you have a question or two you'd like to contribute? We were flooded the likes of, I mean, biblical proportions of flooding here. So Wow. It's like you're in Los Angeles or something. <laughs> We absolutely. And so, you know, we are working with limited time and but we are also working with passion. So we are going to power through this stuff. We have okay. combined a lot of these topics and questions. We apologize to those of you. We're not going to be able to shout everybody out because literally if we went through everybody, we'd be here way too long. Um, I'll just say everyone who participated. Thank you. We love our fans. Awesome. Awesome. Um, we're going to try to hit as much as we can here. Lisey, are you ready to enter the matrix? Let's do this. <laughs> I don't like the way that sounded. I tried that out for the first time. I'm never going to say it again. Okay. Every, every week, every episode, we're going to do like a nineties reference, like welcome to Jurassic park. That'll be nice. <laughs> um, but thank you for grinning and bearing that. Uh, Tracy Grimshaw's wig uh, is up first. She wants to know, um, or he, 
I'm not sure, but landing the role of Becky was not only one of your first gigs, but one of your first auditions. Now, I'm, I'm, I have not been able to do the research to back this up. Is that true? That is true. It was my second audition, and my first audition was for, talk about a reference, my stepmother was an alien. <laughs> Remember that movie? Dan Aykroyd, right? Kim Basinger? Yeah, so that was around the time it was kind of like a post-John Hughes not post, but, you know, there was a lot of young actors from Chicago that people were kind of seeking out. And that was my first audition. And then Roseanne was my second. Wow. Wow. So what, I mean, was it? Don't was tell it, your, your friends with actor kids that, by the way. Yeah, that will make a lot That's of That's an anomaly. <laughs> <laughs> so was it just like an open casting call? Like, did you have any sort of inside scoop to get this role whatsoever or or did you just find your destiny early on are you asking if i'm a nepo baby (laughs) no but now now you have to answer the question well my dad did work for the environmental protection agency so i kind of did have an in but um (laughs) no it was i was studying at this place piven theater workshop which still exists in my hometown of evanston illinois and um there were actors like John Cusack and Joan Cusack and Aidan Quinn and Lily Taylor that came out of there, great actors. And um, they would just have kind of open calls in the Chicago area. And I think certain casting places trusted Piven because it was a really, it wasn't really like a grooming for Hollywood situation. It was kids that really liked to act and, you know, it was improvisational based. So it was basically through that. So I didn't have an agent. I was driven to downtown Chicago, which was always a delight um, for me coming from Evanston. And I had just been swimming at the YMCA. My hair was wet and ratty. And my mom said, you know, what? You know, you're, you think that you're actually going to get a job looking like this? And I said, eh, whatever, you know. And um, sure enough... That's always that's that's always the part of the the most successful stories is that whatever attitude, right? Like that always leads to seemingly that big moment in everybody's careers. Does it? I, I've heard we've heard that many <laughs> times. Just that you know, I didn't think I was going to get it, so I just kind of went in. Just was like, you know, if I get it, I yeah. get it. If I don't, I don't. And boom, the next day, my life changed forever. So, yeah, well, as you get older as an actor, it usually happens where you're like, I am through with this crazy profession. I am done, done, done. And then it's like, ring, ring, ring. So <laughs> you want the phone to ring. <laughs> Profusely say that you're fed up with the profession, I think. Yeah, put it out there in the ether. <laughs> Post it on, throw it on the internet. That's um, right. My throwaway in wants to know, did you enjoy playing Becky more as a teen, playing her as a teen, or as an adult that we know and love today, playing the adult that we know and love today? Wow, that is a really tough question. I think that a big difference is that I'm not going to school now. Mm-hmm. And so as a young person, balancing that and a full-time job was really challenging. You know, I see kids today that are just trying to get into college and keep their grades up and get all their extra curricular activities lined up and all that stuff. And for me, I had a full-time job. So um, it was a lot, but now I feel like I can appreciate it more. Um, You know, I like being an adult and, and mentoring the kids and being there for the younger generation. And um, I think, I think I'm a better actor, but who knows? Um, I've had a lot more experience, but it's really hard to tell because that show was so, was such a big deal at the time, Yeah, you know, it was quite revolutionary. So that was really exciting to be a part of that. Definitely. Um, can't imagine. I mean, it's, we'll get to it later, but you know, we're going to talk about sort of your, your path from being on the show and not being on the show and then coming back to the show. And, uh, but first let's get to miss feline 99. That's a fun name to walk around with in life. The family has gone through some dark times during the Connors have any scenes or episodes in this iteration of the show. Um, have you found them hard to film or taken you to a place that actually affected you, followed you home? Like, was there any 
anything that was so dark that it really did kind of kind of mess with you? That's a really good question. Um, I think, you know, it's very interesting playing a character. I think actors always feel this way about their characters, but there is kind of a feeling of, I sit at home and think, huh, what's Becky going through? Or, hey, this is a really tough time for her or, you know, and um, I think, you know, I guess even in this past this past uh, year that just kind of being overwhelmed, you know, now that she has a kid, um, she's in school, she's working, that she's really kind of, she can be kind of um, overwhelmed and exhausted as most moms are. And, um, but, you know, I think the episode that I wrote, which was about um, gun violence in the Chicago area, that was really powerful. And that was, um, that was pretty dark, you know, but it was about the fact that families, you know, it couldn't be more topical, unfortunately, but that the, that families in our country actually are going through that with their families. And then it's not just some kind of, you know, um, drop in the pond. It's, it's something that really affects us as mm-hmm. Americans. And um, so that was quite an example. And then of course, Becky's sobriety and alcoholism. That was a whole journey. Um, that was very emotional. Yeah. Yeah. Your your Becky has been put through the ringer. She um, has. She <laughs> she needs a break. <laughs> <laughs> Send her to Disney World. Maybe that's the uh, no spoilers, but that's the that's the season finale, everyone. It's just Becky in Disney World having a great time. Well, um, I don't think ABC would mind that. ABC <laughs> Disney. Probably not. <laughs> Um, oh, here's a good one. Bats don't fly. You mentioned uh, your your hometown as a native Illinoisan. Is that the correct phrase? Is that how you term yourself? Um, I I wouldn't use the S, but Illinoisan. Illinoisan. I don't know. <laughs> it sounds it sounds like a comment on someone's attitude. Like they're just. I Illinois. usually say Chicagoan, but I but yeah, sure, Illinoisan. Let's do that. <laughs> well. Uh, for somebody from that state, does anything about the way that Lanford has been represented and built up over the years, does that feel familiar? Does it feel authentic? Does it feel like like the way that a town or a city like Lanford should feel? Yeah, well, um, I have to say that I'm quite an ambassador for that, for the show. And um, for example, I also did a story by about the Bears what it's like to be a Bears fan. And, you know, if you're from, if you are an Illinoisan, the odds are good that you're quite a sports fanatic. Um, I'm not saying, you know, everyone is, but the lot of us, that's what we talk about. You know, I watched the Cubs game yesterday and we won. That really made my day. But um, because I did the story by about the Bears, we now have the lunchbox as a Bears organization basically Mm. it's a bears bar and um there's nothing that i delight more in than coming to work and seeing everyone in bears gear and you know cheering for the games and references about the bulls game and (laughs) you know this is like definitely my wheelhouse so Nice, nice. You're once again an influencer um and the legacy (laughs) of this family, this show. Uh we t- we touched on this already, but JM Pins TL would like to know how challenging it was working with COVID protocols in place during the pandemic. Now, specifically, you guys worked for a, a seems like a long period of time without an actual studio audience. How does that change the way that you guys that you have to approach performing because you're so used to that dynamic, right? Yeah, I mean, what people may or may not know is that we work with a hundred people, I mean, almost 200 people. So there are a lot of people around Mm -hmm. um, all the time. So it's not like we're living in this vacuum and it's this intimate kind of thing. Like there's camera guys and there's grips and there's hair and makeup running around and there's writers. And, you know, so we always have an audience. We always have quite a, a large audience, actually, like more than when I've done improv in New York City at midnight you know, in Chelsea or whatever. <laughs> but um, so in that way, we we still have 
some kind of response. But a big difference is that we don't have the fans there. And there are people that really um, feel like our show is important to them and they get excited about it and they get excited about the characters. And that's something that we definitely missed. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, You walked away from the role of Becky in the past while pursuing your education. Um, How initially receptive were you to the idea of coming back to play Becky for the latest incarnation of the show? Was that something that you hesitated about or were you happy to kind of revisit this character? Um, I, I didn't really know what it was going to be like at first. So I, I didn't really, I, I was more of a curiosity. It wasn't really like an instinct about yay or nay, because I wasn't really sure what it was going to be, you know? And, um, but I thought, what the heck, you know, I always said, cause I'm, I live in New York and I think something, some job would have to bring me back to Los Angeles. That was really appealing. And then here was this. And um, because, you know, it's not just like getting the job, it's like kind of uprooting from my life here. And, um, but I'm so glad I did. There's so many people that I work with that I love that I worked with back then too. And those relationships are just really important to me. And, and I'm very blessed to have those people back in my life, including the cast. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, external recipe, 1936. That's the award for the best name of the day. I'm calling it right now. Um, most, yeah. <laughs> most people go to school as a means to an end, a way to get to where they want to be. You left one of TV's top shows to go to school. So at that time in your life, where did you want to be? What was that ultimate goal that took you away from playing Becky? Um, I don't think there was an ultimate goal apart from just kind of reintegrating with, I, I don't want to say normalcy, because what does that mean? But just having a life, you know, being around kids my age, which I wasn't really, you know, save Sarah, which was amazing because she's my age and intelligent and fun and funny and a troublemaker like I was. But, um, but yeah, I just wanted to, you know, be on the rugby team and write poetry and talk about books and um, do all those things that, that people do in college. I really just wanted to kind of explore. It wasn't like I was pre-med, you know, I went to a liberal arts college. So um, I wanted to learn how to learn and just kind of be in that, in that world at that time in my life. And I'm so glad that I did. Yeah. And you know, you talk about the, the, the appreciation, the gratitude, your feelings about being back in this role. Now I'd imagine back then doing what you wanted to do allows you to be in the position to feel really good about what you're doing now. Right. Absolutely. And you know, it's funny because now my friends, their kids are going to college. So there's a lot of talk about college, but I've been back in New York, maybe like a week and a half and I've already seen a handful of my college friends and that's really what it's about. You know, it's not, I think it's not really getting you somewhere. There's, I'm lucky that I was in a position where I could read a lot. That was wonderful. But um, it's mostly the relationships that I found during that time that have been really so amazing for my life. That's great. That's great. Um, Days Pirate wants to know, is any of the stuff on the Connor set original props from the original Roseanne? Um. That's a good question. I don't think many. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure if any. There was a lot of recreation. There was a lot of kind of hunting um, for different things. You know, the couch is like privately owned by someone. (laughs) Um, I know that someone made us a new Afghan. Uh, I think, I hope that there's like the pickled eggs are new relatively because that would be... (laughs) really gross but then again i don't know how easy those are to are to come by but um i think a lot of it was is new and recreated and and boy did they did an amazing job yeah and who knew i mean who would have known back then that 
you know, a couple decades later, not just, you know, the Connors, but all these different shows would be coming back in some form and, hey, let's save everything and keep it pristine. Nobody would have had any inkling back then. So makes totally. sense. Um, speaking of an important prop, there's a story behind this. I'm going to mention it to uh-huh. you. Let's see if this comes right to mind. Few yeah. Raspberry 8363, straight up. What was up with the chicken shirt? The chicken shirt was just something that um, I, I forget, you know, the costumers probably know exactly where they found it, but it, it kind of appeared. <laughs> and then it was just so, just so um, idiosyncratic. That's a nice way to say what it is, but I, I, it's just kind of a, just a bizarre piece of clothing. Um, and then that we all kind of, you know, like the, pickled eggs i mean that's why why do we have to have that on the show because it's just kind of a niche thing but um after you know then there was like this thing of everyone having to wear it so all the characters at some point had to wear that chicken shirt and now you know you walk around and sometimes i see people wearing (laughs) kind of a copy of it which is pretty hilarious it's a legend. It's the stuff of legends. And by the way, if anyone is looking for Lisey's secret handle on Reddit or any social media, I'm pretty sure it's idiosyncratic because that's the first time we've heard this word on this show. I feel like that's part of your signature, your identity, um, <laughs> an easy identifier, perhaps. Um, Lion Court would like to know, what's your favorite Becky episode? And is there a favorite line that you've had in the entire course of becky that sticks out to you? Oh my God, that is so hard. Mm. Um, oh, the favorite episode. I don't know about that. Um, there's so many good ones. I mean, that's a good thing to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, there's iconic ones, like the one where Becky doesn't talk um, to her parents and then where she farts in class and when <laughs> she flips the bird. I mean, the one where she pretends to flip the bird back in the day and actually didn't do it is pretty funny because I think it says a lot about her that like she's so nerdy that 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 act of rebellion she had to lie and actually pretend that um it was her who did that um but you know gosh I, I I don't know I I don't think that's possible for me to really answer that unfortunately sorry oh it's a lot and hey it's an invitation folks send us your favorite becky episode yeah send us your favorite becky lines and we'll have a becky party when we premiere this episode <laughs> so um and we are we are uh we're hitting right on time here so we are down to the last big question that i have for you um okay. we're down to the last few episodes we talked about it season five coming to a close I'm not going to ask you for spoilers. That would be evil. But I want to metaphorically look at this season as a flight. We're on a plane right now. We're circling the airport. The runway is below. What kind of landing are we expecting here? Is it going to be smooth? Is there turbulence? Like, Give us whatever you can and uh, let us know what we're in for. Well, um, I would say that it really wouldn't be our show without a little turbulence. So I would say your tray might be, you know, buckle the seatbelt. We're going in for a land. But then I think that, you know, this, the plane will rock a little bit and then the wheels will come down and we'll just kind of maybe a little bump, mm-hmm. but relatively smooth. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're excited. The Connors, of course. And maybe a you- little lift up too, because it's, you know, there's a little bit of hope that happens. So, oh my, this is another roller coaster <laughs> metaphor. It's an emotional roller coaster ahead of us. If you guys haven't been watching, you can catch up. The Connors are on Hulu, and of course, new episodes airing Wednesday nights, 8 p.m., 7 p.m. Central. And we have been talking to a legend, an icon, all those things. Lisey, thank you so much for joining us. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you guys for checking us out here on 90s to Now, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.